Thank you very much, Michelle. And thank you everyone for attending. We really appreciate it. I know it's been a, a long day, but hopefully an enjoyable day with the conference and some, some great sessions. Uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, an open educational resource that, that, that we created uh, that had to do with our uh, quality enhancement plan for the, the university. So um, usually when I mention the quality enhancement plan, and particularly that I'm the uh, director of the QEP, I either get eye rolls or sighs or, or people run away from me. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, I, I really have seen that the QEP is an opportunity to really do something great at, at the university to really at least make a difference. Um, and so our QEP was focused on, on teamwork. And part of what we were doing to implement and to, to uh, work on this, this issue of teamwork uh, was professional learning communities. And the, the PLC program had been uh, established for a couple of years at UTA and it was in danger of going away. And we kind of uh, resurrected it through the, the, the QEP. And it's going well. And we really were getting a great group of faculty who were committed to sort of enhancing and, and and assessing teamwork in their courses and really trying to make it a, a worthwhile experience for students. But what I realized after a little while was that we were getting a lot of sort of disparate data that, that everyone was doing something different. And it was really hard to get this sort of cohesive kind of um, set of data as to what was actually going on. And I'd actually attended the SACS conference where somebody had mentioned that they had used a, a book as part of their QEP process. And, and I thought to myself, you know, why couldn't we create something ourselves? I didn't really know too much about OER or anything like that. Um, but I was just like, you know, I, I think we could create something that could be useful. And if we do it right, we could really start to start spread it out throughout the university and, you know, maybe start to make a difference that way and, and be able to gather some data. And so I reached out to some people and Justin was, was one of the, the, the people that I, I reached out to to kind of talk about this idea and go like, you know, am I, am I crazy or is it really something that is, is worth doing? And Justin had more experience in sort of the OER world than I had and kind of, and he was sort of the, I guess, part of the impetus to, to kind of, you know, let's make this a, an, an OER resource and not just something that, you know, not just a, another book or another guide or something, you know, at, at the university. So just you want to pick it up just a little bit here and, and talk about sort of the initial, or at least this initial steps here. Yeah, so um, I work very closely with our open education uh, resource director, um, Michelle Reed. Unfortunately, he's got a new job um, up in Illinois now. Um, I'm excited for her. But um, I, worked, I worked closely with her on another one that we created um, around uh, creating online experiences. Um, it, was a, it was a great experience to be able to put that together. Um, so I, I have experience working in press books and when I was attending some sessions and uh, we kind of put two and two together when Andrew was talking about when we're creating a resource. Um, so we, we, we put together an advisory committee um, to kind of help us think through the process. And uh, so early on, we met with um, different stakeholders across campus, which we thought were you know, really important to that. And some of that included like our graduate studies, um, our career center, um, as well as uh, different faculty that had expertise perhaps in that area. And um, so we started bringing together and starting to flesh out what this might look like. Um, we also did some preliminary uh, survey data with some students as well. Um, in, some, in some classes just to kind of get an idea of where some, maybe some of the gaps were on our campus. And then um, started to meet and put together basically a Google, <laughs> a big Google Doc uh, worth, of, worth of information and trying to figure out the best way of, of presenting it. Um, so we had basically that big wall of text, um, a lot of text in there that we were adding and people were you know, generating different ideas and working through it. Um, and then we uh, started to pilot it and, and talk with, with, with students. Um, and the, we used focus groups to do that. Andrew uh, led that part of it. I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about that, Andrew. Um, yeah, I, I really felt like if we were going to do something like this, this, this OER, that I wanted to get input from the students, that I wanted it to be useful for them, and I wanted their perspective uh, <clears throat> as to what they would look for and, and, and what would resonate with them, and I'm so glad I did because it was, you know, it absolutely changed the whole trajectory of what it was that we were doing. Because as a, as a, as a faculty member, uh, you know, and, and somebody who had been, been teaching for, for a number of years, 
I had in my mind what this this guide should should look like, and and um, I had sort of in my my mind as to to how it should sort of be laid out, and and so we created this um, the, this this pilot document in in Word, and and basically we got um, the the idea was after talking to the associate vice provost and some others. The idea was to use this guide as part of our UNIV, our freshman experience course. So we were looking at where's the best place to, to sort of integrate this into the, um, into the university. How can we start to disseminate it? And so it started up, um, we created the division of student success and they were responsible now for these freshman courses. And so as I talked to the director of the division of student success and, and, and various other people, of thinking, you know, this is the perfect spot for a, a resource like this because we're going to get the students right at the beginning of their college career, which is really what I wanted to do. I didn't see this as something that was just going to change people's attitudes towards teamwork because it's so ingrained. I mean, if you ask students, I even ask incoming faculty, "What's your experience with teamwork?" and they just roll their eyes. And 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 you know, and that was really the dilemma I had was that students have a very poor experience with collaboration in the classroom. Employers say that it's one of the most sought after skills that they have, that they want. And then there's this disconnect because as faculty, we're not often given the resources or even taught ourselves how to really implement it in the class. And we say, all right, you're gonna to work together. And, and I know, you know, I'll just pick on the College of Engineering, for example, and, and at our, our university. I mean, they're accredited. And one of the things that they're accredited along is teamwork. But the way that they do teamwork oftentimes is one, two, three, four, you're a team, one, two, three, four, you're a team, now go work together. And there is no instruction. There's nothing that says, here's how you should work together. Here's some effective practices. Here's just even some, a few steps that you might take to make this a more palatable experience. We really don't do very much like that at all. And so then the students are left to their own devices. And, and oftentimes too, they're, they're, um, even their focus on what they want to achieve out of a pro out of a project is completely different. Uh, I, I remember when I was this really hit home to me when I was a graduate student at the University of Florida, and and the student came to me and said, basically, what is the wh what's the minimum I need to do to pass this class? And and I about fell over. I'm like, what are you talking about? And and all he wanted to do was was basically just know what is the minimum. He and and I said, well, I think technically a D is a passing grade. He's like, great. And I'm like, really? And he said, yeah, that's, that's all I want. Now you put somebody like that in a group with somebody who wants to get an A and you've got this, 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 this issues, you know, right there. And so these are some of the, the, the problems that we face. So we took this, so we, the, the, the way that they do the UNIV courses is that they are taught by peer academic leaders with faculty oversight. And I thought, well, if the peer academic leaders are gonna be the ones that are gonna implement this in the, in, in, into their courses, then I need to talk to them and I need to find out what they think. And so we basically got this text heavy document together and we held a focus group in the conference room with gosh, about 10 or so peer academic leaders and Justin and I were there. And we basically handed them around, handed them the, the, this, this draft. And the first thing that I asked them was, you know, tell me what teamwork means to you just to kind of get them thinking about that. And, and they gave me some really good ideas. And I thought, you know, this is, this is great. These are some, you know, they've got some really interesting. And then I asked them, you know, what, what were their experiences in teamwork? And they told me, and a lot of times it was, there were, there were negative experiences. Um, and, and, and then we started asking them some questions about putting this, this guide together. And it's interesting because I always called it a handbook. I said, you know, it's a teamwork handbook. And one of the first things and the most impactful things that came out of that was they said, don't call it a handbook. I'm like, why? Now, a handbook sounds like it's stuffy. It sounds like it's going to be another textbook. Call it a guide. Yeah. yeah, very prescriptive. So they said, call it a guide. I'm like, okay, we'll call it a guide. And then they said, <laughs> they said, there's not enough pictures. And I said, what do you mean there's not enough pictures? They said, we want infographics. We want pictures. We, we don't want to read through the text. And, and one thing that came out of it, they said, well, even the table of contents we don't want a table of contents. If you could put pictures in there instead of just a table of contents, that would be good. And, and it really set both of us just thinking like, you know, our perspective, uh, the, they, they agreed that there the, the needed to be a, a, a resource like this. 
they were really on board there and and they were really on board with a lot of the content but it was a way it was the way that that content was delivered that that you know they saw it completely different from the way that i i saw it and so we we revised things and we really started to uh to 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 really re-examine what was in there and how we were presenting it. So it wasn't just about the content, it was about the presentation of the content. And to them, that was that was as important, that they wanted something that looked, I mean, and, and you know, I mean it's common sort of marketing, but 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 they really did want something that was that was visually appealing. They wanted infographics. They wanted the language to be, you know, fairly conversational, which which I think it was for, for the most part. But they didn't want it to sound like it was a textbook. They didn't want it to sound like it was too stuffy. So these are this is what it was like. This was the uh, the the on the left was what I had just initially just put together, just as a not even really trying to think of anything. And on the right then was what we ended up with. We hired a again. I, I think both Justin and I really felt that it was important that the students were a part of this from the very beginning. And so we hired a student worker, an undergraduate, uh, who had had a background in uh, graphic design as well as in, in, in broadcast communication, and, and basically asked her to design it. I said, you know, this is this is the input. This is what we're wanting. This is the uh, information that we're, you know, this is what we're hearing. But I want you to be the architect of it and and design it. And so that's the cover that she um, came up with. And then this was the difference in terms of the table of contents. On the left was what I had originally. And then, and this is based on, you know, just their feedback and then her infographic, she came up with, with a table of contents that was just much more visually uh, appealing. Same kinds of uh, headings and the same kinds of, of things, but just, it just uh, was just much more visually appealing. And so you can see there the, the different, um, uh, sort of the breakdowns of different parts of, of the guide. Uh, so we had the introduction, the objective, just what we're trying to do and why we thought teamwork was important. Uh, the benefits of teamwork, being a leader, being a follower, uh, what is a team, how you can contribute, marketing your teamwork experience. And then we got some testimonials, reflections and resources from, from some, some people, some employers, some people in the community who, who are actually, and, and we're, we're still working, it's a work in progress. We're still working on, on building this out. Um, but so, so that's how the, the, the table of contents changed based on, on their feedback. And then this is, again, this was a section on um, conflict, handling conflict in a team. And my goal, and I'll just go back for a second here, the goal was, was that this be very modular. So we didn't want something that necessarily they had to read from beginning to end and read. And we wanted something that you could just even pick out a chunk and just go, okay, this is what we're gonna talk about. And that's really what the PALs have done very, very nicely. Uh, a lot of the, the, the groups and the UNIV courses are centered around majors and around colleges. And so, you know, somebody who's in nursing may pick out one area and somebody who's in engineering may pick out a different area. Um, but, you know, a lot of time too, the students will go through the book, but this isn't a semester long endeavor. I mean, this is maybe a couple of classes, but it's enough to hopefully at least start to, um, you know, make people aware of, of, of some of the issues and some of the, 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 the potential around teamwork. So this was one on, on dealing with um, difficult people or dealing with conflicts in teams. And again, very, very text heavy. And then basically what we did was we took exactly the same thing almost, but we just turned it into an infographic. And so we used infographics and, and the students just seemed to think it was, and. But, but this was one area that, that really did cause us some problems in the creation of this guide. And Justin could talk a little bit more about it because um, again, the students wanted something that was really text heavy, really uh, graphic heavy. And when we were trying to put it into press books, we found that, that it was a little bit more difficult than what we thought. And we were kind of almost breaking the machine. So Justin. Yes, um, so we were, uh, this is a trans translation thing between, we were using InDesign, um, Paulina, when she was helping us with, uh, with, with all the design in that for the PDF version of it. And then yes, trying to translate into the, the Pressbooks environment 
Um, I think someone's going to rock, rock up and ring my doorbell. So my dog's about to bark like crazy. But <laughs> um, and there they go. Um, so with the um, with the Pressbooks environment, there are some limitations in the way that we could be able to structure some of the, of the work in there. That's been a challenge for us to be able to keep that same sort of graphic um, uh, emphasis on it. So there are some sections that, that translated very well, other ones that did not do quite as well. Unfortunately, we've had to kind of rethink about how we would do it, maybe make it a little more text heavy. But but overall, you know, I think that we found a way to be able to sort of negotiated it to, to a way that we feel is, is at least good enough for our purposes. And um, we're hoping that we can get some more support going forward from our institution or from others to be able to, to uh, make it a little bit uh, more so. So we'll, we'll share the, uh, the Pressbooks version of this. Um, I have the links here and I'll drop them in the chat so you can take a look at them. Um, one thing that I'll say is that, but we see both of these as living documents. Um, I, I know that we kind of mentioned that a minute ago. Um, so we have the, the student guide, which we're mainly focusing on today, but we also have an instructor companion guide that has you know, some sample lesson plans um, the, you know, in the chat, a, a, a case study, um, as well as um, some sample, you know, other activities for, for people to work on. So um, again, we'll put that in there. And while we only have a short period of time today to talk about it, definitely feel free to reach out to us on it. So we, we piloted it in the first year experience courses with some of the PLC faculty and then some other courses around the university. Uh, and and we, what we did was we embedded in the guide a pre and a post survey and also a reflection. So we put in QR codes and, and, and links as well. And um, we, we asked that, that you know, they make sure that the students do the pre-survey first, obviously at the beginning, and then the, the post survey as well, just so we can kind of get a sense of what's going on and, and you know, for, for my purposes too. And, and these um, surveys will map to the, the learning outcomes that we have for the QEP as well. One of the things that we asked them at the beginning in, in the pre-survey was just which of the following teamwork related areas did you feel would benefit you the most? And uh, these were basically the different sections of, of the guide. And what was interesting is that the, the highest number was, was here was how to be an effective follower and leader which it turns out is probably one of the most popular parts when we talk to the PALS as well. Uh, I teach a graduate qualitative research class. And so every year I get my graduate students to do some focus groups with the PALS just to kind of follow up and, and say, how's it going? How's, how's the use of the guide and, and that kind of thing? What can we improve on? And so we've done that for, for a couple of years now, but they oftentimes mention the how to be an effective follower and leader. What's really interesting and what's neat is that the PALS also have, have been learning. They're like, man, you know, I've, I've really learned some stuff. I didn't realize this, this whole thing about being a follower, how a follower can be important, just as important as a leader. And, uh, and, and you know, one of, the, one of the, the pals, actually, she mentioned the focus group. She said, um, I was going for a job interview. And she said, this guide was so helpful. And I, I learned, you know, I learned so much from it, even using it in, in, in the course. And she said, I got the job. And then she said, no, I hate the job. <laughs> Because uh, it just they it, it just they overpromised and it wasn't what she thought. But I mean, it was really neat to hear just her testimony of how she was able to use it um, herself. And so that was a popular how to handle conflicts is always um, something that's uh, become very popular as well and seems to resonate with with them. So on the feedback process on the uh, the, the the back end then in the, uh, the the post survey. One of the questions was, has your appreciation for teamwork changed after using the student teamwork guide? And then we asked them sort of a follow-up question as to how, if so, how, and if not, why not? Um, so 63% of the students said that their appreciation for teamwork had, had certainly changed um, and for the positive uh, as a result of, of using the, the guide. Um, and then what's interesting is just some of the, 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 the quotes that came out of the, uh, the 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 reflection and also the sort of the qualitative part of that survey when we asked them what their appreciation had changed. One said, and and you know, some of them said certainly their attitude hadn't changed. I mean, one person said, you know, I learned that that I hate teamwork and I still hate teamwork. Um, but but some have said, yes, you know, it certainly some people said, you know, it, it just reinforced what I already thought. And I thought this was a really interesting quote. Uh, my attitude has not changed all that much. I believe teamwork's a very important and efficient process and reading the guide has only strengthened that thought. It's given me some ideas on how to improve as a teammate, however, such as being more communicative. So even though he said, you know, my attitude hasn't really changed that much. He's saying, you know, um, uh, yeah, but, but there are, there have been some things, th good things that I took away from it. 
Uh, some other, these are sort of more, um, these are quotes from people who said that their attitude had changed. I've learned to consider other people's experiences when working on a group project. I've, I have a more positive outlook towards teamwork now that I know what to do in certain situations. I now realize the importance of communication. Uh, my attitude towards teamwork has changed in the fact that we can hold each other mutually accountable and having a clear, open, honest communication with each other. And so I went through a lot of the reflections and I've got a, a student working with me too and she's, she's going through and sort of analyzing it. But we're looking for themes from each of the, the, the responses from the, um, from the feedback. And these three words came up over and over on these three themes. Sometimes they were the actual words, sometimes it was just more alluded to, but communication, common goal and accountability. Uh, over and over and over the students said, you know, I'm realizing now more important, how important communication is the need for, if you're gonna have an effective team, you've gotta be able to have communication. Uh, and again, over and over and over, they talked about, you know, effective teamwork is about working towards a common goal. And I've realized that, you know, if we can all work towards a common goal, then, then maybe we're going to have a better experience. And, and accountability was the other, the, you know, the importance of holding each other, about holding each other accountable, the importance of, um, you know, making sure that, that each person is, is, is doing their, their part. And that mirrors some of the common complaints that, that, that we hear a lot, you know, is that students will say, I do all the work, and, you know, the others don't do it or I want to do this and the others, or I can never get a hold of them. I can never, you know, and these are, it's interesting. I thought these three things really kind of mirror almost the, the common complaints that I hear. And so, again, I don't believe that, that the guide's uh, sort of a panacea is not going to solve all of the ills towards teamwork, but if it does, you know, help students to at least think a little bit more about what a team, you know, an effective teamwork process looks like and, and what are some of the strategies that they could actually employ to, to making the teamwork process more effective. And then if instructors can use this as a resource as well. Um, my, my, my goal is that really when, when an instructor has a collaborative assignment in class, that they say, you know, we're gonna work together in, in groups, but before we do, let's take a minute to just go through this and let's look at some of the things that can make your experience a little bit more, you know, effective and maybe more palatable so that you're not gonna have this experience where everybody's moaning because we gotta work together. But instead of it being a negative thing, let's make it a positive thing. Let's look at how some things that we can do positively. Because you know, when you start to when you get ready to graduate, when you graduate, teamwork is was one of the top, you know, few traits that employers are looking for. And over and over and over again, you know, I see in job descriptions the ability to be able to work together, the ability to be able to work as part of a team. And and if they can at least start to understand that now and get that, then I think they're going to be a lot better off when they when they graduate. So, thank you for your time. I think we got time for for some 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 questions. Andrew, thank you so much. Yeah, so we have two um, questions. Yeah. Yes, uh, Esther Trufan asked uh, if you have considered creating short animation videos to illustrate the content. That is a, a that is a great idea. And and I'm a I'm a broadcast professor, and so um, yeah, you know I I do we do use video a lot at least with the the, the PLCs, the short testimonials and things, and we started to do that. But the animation is is something that I would I would love to do, and um, thank you for that suggestion because there are some people that may be on campus I can I can reach out to. That's a great suggestion. And we'd also thought about the possibility of. Of taking these modules and putting them, we we use Canvas and um, using our catalog option to be able to to put some more uh, resources and have students be able to work through it and through through that way too, and that might even lend itself even better to to that kind of work as well. So, you know, right, just making just having something. having some modules within the Canvas shell and actually, you know, making this more modular within something. Just with some of that heavier yeah, video content. Animation would be just a great idea. Yeah, because one of, one of the challenges, again, when you're working with something like Pressbooks is, so if you have a PDF download version, stuff like videos become a challenge, um, audio and video. So we had to do stuff like put links in there to things that people could be able to go and access if they want to type it in, or QR codes or those sorts of things to be able to get quick access. But then when you do that, sometimes there are challenges of links change and if it's a print, you know, PDF version, it becomes a little bit more permanent um, and then a print even more so. 
So we're having to be very careful and thoughtful about, you know, if we're adjusting, like one of the things we had to do is we, our university switched from Qualtrics to Question Pro. <laughs> so our QR codes for our surveys changed too, um, along with that. So, so just, just some challenges um, around, around some of those, uh, the planning side of it. You have to definitely have to think long-term when you're developing a resource like this and something like Crossbooks. Esther also asked uh, if you assess teamwork skills in the courses. Yeah, um, the hard thing is, is to assess the process, right? I mean, it's, it's one thing to say, you know, do you like teamwork, do you not like teamwork, that kind of thing. It's another to assess the, 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 the process. And uh, that's where, in, in terms of what we're doing with the QEP, that's where the PLC program has really yeah. come in, where the individual faculty are really working on how to, how to sort of assess the, the, the process of teamwork and, and, and um, how to assess what's actually sort of taking place. So we, I mean, we've asked them sort of some basic questions about, about their understanding of what teamwork is, their appreciation, you know, the application, that kind of thing, you know, in terms of this guide, at least initially, that's, that's where we're going. Um, but but that, that, that process about really assessing how they actually work together. That's what we're working through with our PLC program. We have a live question from Jennifer Epley. Hey, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, one thought uh, or suggestion that I had that dovetails on a previous inquiry about um, video or multimedia that could be incorporated um, into the guide. Um, might be if you if you if it's going to be too much legwork, for instance, to embed the modules within it, you could just um, tuck it into an appendix or um, as as part of the ancillary materials. Uh, but in terms of actually generating those videos, um, one suggestion might be to actually have students produce the OER themselves. Mm -hmm. So um, and so one assessment that I do in my class, um, I teach uh, political science specifically in the area of international relations. And so one thing that I have them do is create um, the equivalent of a public service announcement on an international um, problem or concern um, using OER materials, right? So they're getting the practice navigating the databases, for example, or the, the repositories. So they're getting it, but they're also applying the teamwork principles, if that makes sense. So they, they, yes. they're, they're kind of... They're, they're doing it, they're teaching it, and then they also happen to be producing a product that yeah. could be shared. Um, and one incentive um, that I tell my students when we're doing some of these group projects is, this is something that you could actually add to your portfolio or to your resume later. So there would be presumably a permalink um, or a DOI or something that's associated with that. So um, that, that would be one incentive um, you might, but. As a side note, you want to make sure that if students happen to be doing this for a grade, um, that they don't feel the pressure that all their business is out there. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's 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 <laughs> a great that's a great idea. I, I think I appreciate that. Yeah, One thing I'll I tell found, you. I, yeah, I found the students, um, and and what I found is over the years, like the videos and technology and images and current events and things that they're picking. Some of the themes stay the same, but like I can't keep up with it as the individual right. instructor. So um, you, there's a possibility that you could get fresh stuff, so to speak, like every year even, or with mm -hmm. each cohort, depending on who's using your- One, one, one thing I'll tell you, sorry, Justin, go ahead. Okay, we're definitely using the repositories. Um, we thought about the student code creation is very important, near and dear to me. And um, we're definitely doing that on the PAL side for sure. Um, creation of lesson plans that faculty, graduate students, like GTAs and, and others can use um, is definitely one. Um, yeah, we haven't thought as much about it on, on the student side for a maybe a repository of, of examples or different things, projects that they're doing. Well, that's, that's really that sounds like a great idea. And we have a space through the library commons that we're we'll able to host stuff like that. So it's really exciting. So thank you for that. Um, one thing that I'll just tell you that we're doing too is that through the uh, the first year experience courses, um, they're they're implementing a a section on entrepreneurship and sort of problem solving and design and that thinking, and so we're going to kind of dovetail with them, and so they're going to have their first part will be the teamwork and the teamwork I'm talking about it. And then the second part is going to be doing this entrepreneurship where they're actually going to be working together in groups to solve a problem or, or to do something. So. 
Um, I think that's going to be really effective. It, that's going to be starting in the fall. And I'm really excited to see how, how the two kind of work together because, um, yeah, it's not something they, they approached me and said, this is what we're doing. What do you think? And I'm like, it's a perfect match. So we are out of time, but, um, do you have time for one more question? Sure. Uh, David Ryden asked, what type of teamwork assignments you would recommend to those teaching in the humanities and or social sciences? This is always a challenge and wondering if you have a quick answer. Justin? Quick answer, ooh. Um, no, David, I put my email in the chat though. <laughs> Um, feel free to write me. I can I can pull up a couple of things. I'm having trouble thinking anything in a one minute here. But <laughs> um, Andrew, do you have anything in, in what you do in communication? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's there's a number of different different things that you can do. One of the things that I've I've done, I teach a communication law class, uh, and so I used to have the students write a legal brief, and they would just they, they would each individually they'd pick a case, and they would sort of write a summary of it. And I thought, well, why can't they learn to work together and, and maybe do something a little bit more creative? And so I, I've sort of given them the parameters. One of the things that I always tell them when they start to work together to create this is said, the first thing you need to do is come up with a name. It's amazing how when you come up with a name, it really starts to galvanize them together and they start to have an identity. Uh, but then the second thing is, so now this brief, instead of being a text heavy brief, I said, I want you to create a case summary or a legal brief but I want you to do it in the creative way and you can't use PowerPoint. Um, and, and really what it's done, it's been fascinating. We had one, one did like a, a mock newscast. Somebody else did kind of like a podcast. Somebody else did a, some other creative presentation. And you know, basically what I'm saying is you need to explain this kind of co complex idea, this complex case. And I want you to simplify it in a way that the average person could understand what happened, what the background was, what happened and what the outcome was. And it's gotta be done in such a way that the average person can do it. So they work in groups of like three, sometimes four I found is a little too much, but, but three is, is, is a fairly good number to hold each other accountable. And then they work to, to put this together. So what was a, what a text heavy individual assignment now becomes sort of a group assignment that, that they can all work together. And, and that creative element really just gives them something that sort of added impetus to really do something. There still are problems. I had a student the other day um, who admitted they do a self-reflection as well as a reflection on the, the team. And he said, I really didn't contribute very much at all. And, and his teammates backed it up. And so I, I tell them, I said, your grades aren't equal. And, and so he got a lower grade and, and he asked me, he's like, well, what, what's about the grade? I said, listen, the evidence is there. You told me yourself and your team backed it up. And this is why you got the grade. And, and you know, he was, he was okay with it. So I mean, that's just one example. I mean, I don't know if it's exactly what you're looking for, but it's an example of how, you know, I've, I've been able to, to do yeah, something. Yeah, I thought of one real quick that I, that I did. So it provided a lot of flexibility um, when I was teaching uh, US history courses and, and how um, students uh, could, could demonstrate the knowledge that they had. Um, so they could work individually, they could uh, work in pairs or in groups. So let's just say it's the constitutional convention. So they could go and one student that, used uh, some of the excited creative uh, side. They had been um, worked for JC Penney and done layout and that kind of thing. So they actually created like this big old graphic uh, thing that was, that was really awesome. They were, you know, so excited about being able to do it. I had other students that went and like created um, uh, cr a claymation video and Lego videos to be able to walk through the steps of the, of the, um, of the Constitutional Convention. And then there is another group that went together and they put together a team and they all had roles of the different people in the convention and they were able to talk about the different plans and, and things like that. So, um, so I given some flexibility there and allowed them to have some of the options to pick and choose where they were going to work in that. That was, that was, um, that was a lot of fun. Um, and I had a, a flexible enough rubric that I used that I was able to assess depending on whatever, whatever they did. Um, it didn't, it didn't necessarily matter. So that was a lot of fun. I got some really awesome things and people are like, I spent 30 hours on this because I was so excited about it and get that kind of energy. It. So, so things like that are, it can be fun, but it can also be a lot of work and thought up front to make sure that you scaffold well. well. Thank you so much for answering our questions and for giving us such a great presentation. Uh, everyone, uh, please remember to answer our survey uh, coming in tomorrow after the conference, and I'll see you around other talks.
Bye. Thank, thank you, Michelle. Goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for all those stuff. You have questions.